One of my favorite things about eating out at a Mexican restaurant is the fresh guacamole. I just love it. And I'm going to show you how to make your own guacamole at home that's going to be every bit as good, if not better, than what you get at the restaurant. Are you ready? The kitchen is now open. Hi, I'm Deb, and this is my kitchen. Family is built around the dinner table, so we're here to help you to make good food, have fun, all without breaking the bank or having to spend all day in the kitchen. And if you don't know how to cook, don't worry, it's okay. We'll walk you through it step by step. So thanks for watching, subscribing, and sharing our videos to help as many families as we can. Come on in, let's cook up something good. For awesome homemade guacamole, you need ripe avocados, a spice packet, white onions, cilantro, tomatoes, and fresh lime juice if you can get it, or the bottled stuff from the store will work too. For your tools, you're going to need a cutting board, a large knife, a bowl, a medium-sized spoon, a small fork, a spatula, and a citrus squeezer, which is also optional. If you've got one, it's great. Otherwise, I'll show you how to do it without. Okay, step one, I'm going to remove the stem and cut this baby lengthwise all the way around and pop it open. Beautiful. And you see one side, you've got the seed. The easiest thing for me to do is just grab it with my fingernail and pop it out. A little bit of, little bit of uh, the skin on there. I don't want that. So now, Next step is to scoop out the avocado, and I'm just taking it with this medium spoon, scooping it right out. This is so nice, because I don't have to worry about trying to peel the doggone thing. It scoops out really quite easily. There's one. Well, the skin's kind of leathery, so it, it's pretty solid and it's easy to scoop it out and it comes out pretty clean. So I'm going to go ahead and do another one. Um, I like to figure about a half of an avocado. An avocado. That's how my little sister used to say it when we were little. Uh, a half an avocado per person. Well, that's an unpleasant surprise. You can see that's kind of nasty in there. But to spare not, there's still, you can see here, some nice area. So I'm just going to carefully avoid that part that doesn't look good and use what I can. I don't want to throw out a whole avocado. I mean, it happens in the real world, but uh, I hate to do that. And see, I pull the seed out. And again, this is yucky up here. It's weird stuff up here, but the bottom looks really nice. So I'm probably only losing about a third of that avocado. There you go. And it just so happens I had an extra in the fridge. And it's a little discolored, but it's still perfectly good. It's still nice and green inside, so I'm going to go ahead and use that too. We've got people coming, so we're going to have a big batch tonight. Go ahead and put that one in, too. And then I had another one that I just scooped out earlier. I'm going to add that as well. Now, you see me throwing my um, skins to the side. They're trash, but don't throw out those pits, the seeds, because you're going to want them. They have a purpose. Okay, so next is to mash with a fork. And it's not going to be perfectly smooth. I just want to get so there's no big chunks in it, you know? Yeah, I'd say that looks pretty good. Step four is to add the spice packet. Now, this says extra spicy. You're not going to want to put the whole thing in there. Um, I like to start with 
maybe for two avocados, I would probably use a quarter of the package. I've got about three and a half avocados going on here now. So I'm probably going to use a little more than that. But the thing to remember is you can always add more later when you taste it. You can't take it back out. And if it's too spicy, it's, yeah, it's too much for me. So, um, and I do make it for me. My family just has to go along with it, right? Okay, so that's about a third of the package. And I'm going to take my spatula and mix that in. And the next ingredients are our chopped veggies. I chopped these ahead, so we've got a uh, chopped onion here. And this is very much uh, by sight and taste. Um, but I'd say right now I've got about a half of a white onion in there. And then we have finely chopped cilantro. And um, it was about eh, maybe a quarter of the bunch. And then this is chopped Roma tomatoes. And this was, I believe, three tomatoes. Give that a stir and see what it's looking like. Just on site, because I've done this so many times, I can tell the onion ratio looks pretty good. I would really like some more cilantro in there. I just know by the level of green that I'm going to wish I had more in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the rest of that quarter of a bunch in. And I'm going to go ahead and put the fourth tomato in too. I didn't plan on quite so much avocado till we had that ugly surprise. So my ratios are a little different than what I had anticipated. Well, it's looking pretty good, but it's not ready to taste yet because there's one more ingredient. We need to add the fresh lime juice. Something to know if you're using fresh lime, you rinse it first and then you give it a roll. Put some pressure on it. And I even like to turn it and that's the bottom end and the stem end. I'm going to roll that too. What we're doing is loosening up the cells inside to free up the juice so it will come out more easily. And we're going to cut it in half. And I promised you that I would show you how to do this without the squeezer in case you don't have one. So I'm just going to squeeze this as hard as I can with my fingers and kind of just turn it in my hand. I can even use two hands. And that's coming out of there pretty well. You can see that lime juice pouring out, and I'll tell you, serves two purposes. First of all, it's one of the things that helps keep it from browning. Get my thumbs in there and squish them around. Let me get some extra juice that way, watch. Quite a bit extra. The other thing about lime juice is it makes it taste awesome. It makes it taste so bright and so fresh. Now, I'm gonna show you my cool squeezer. My husband and I were doing this backwards for the longest time. Broke the thing. It was a different one. Um, but anyway, found out we were doing it upside down. So you put the cut side down, okay? That's how it's supposed to work. And you just give it a squeeze and a pour. How easy is that? Pretty nice. Okay, I'm going to stir it in. And we are ready for a taste test. Good onion, good tomato. I used up all my cilantro, so when we go off camera, I'm gonna chop up some more and add it, because I think it needs it. And I'm gonna add a little more spice. I think the lime level is really nice too. 
If I didn't mention it earlier, and even if I did, just a reminder, figure half an avocado per person, that's a pretty good ratio. And then you just go ahead and add your ingredients and fix it to the taste that you and your family love. There you go, beautiful homemade guacamole. I told you there was a reason for keeping the seeds. Real quick, you know, it's gonna be a couple hours before the, the gang gets here, and I wanna make sure that it doesn't get yucky. So I'm gonna take those seeds and put them down inside. I even have this fourth one over here. I'm gonna use them all and take a piece of plastic wrap just clear plastic wrap and push it down on top of the guacamole, not just across the top of the bowl, but down inside right on top of it. Because the point is I'm wanting to try to avoid having air come in contact with it. So there we are. It's all set. A little air in there. I'll work that out too. We'll pop that in the fridge and hold it until it's time for dinner and it's gonna be awesome. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned some things. I hope you'll give it a try. And in the meantime, remember, family is made around the dinner table and if you feed them, they will come. <laughs>